in the mid 90s working as an academic computer scientist i was struck by the explosion of information in the world and in contrast the immense difficulty of accessing that information how do we take these rigid notions of computing and turn them into vibrant experiences that humans adore that is so energizing and so fascinating hello everyone thanks for tuning in to our search on event on behalf of everyone at google we hope you're staying safe and well and taking care of yourselves and each other in today's rapidly changing world information is absolutely critical to people's lives this is why over a billion people every day choose to use google search search has always been at the very core of our mission to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful building the best possible search engine is an incredibly difficult problem and one that i've personally worked on for most of my academic and professional career it's also a problem that my google colleagues have worked on tirelessly for over 22 years and yet the engineering challenges we continue to face is significant every single day 15% of search queries are ones we've never seen before to solve these information needs we're constantly exploring new technologies to understand what you're looking for much has changed since we first launched our search engine there are more ways than ever to search for information on google whether you're asking your google assistant for the latest covid-19 news looking for small businesses to support on maps or identifying a new bird that's visiting your bird feeder using google lens there are also more ways than ever to find information news on twitter flights on kayak and expedia restaurants and open table recommendations on instagram and pinterest items on amazon and many others there's never been more choice and competition in the ways people access information so we humbled and honored that people continue to use google because they find us helpful people trust us to give them the best information and that trust is why we continue to innovate we are here today to highlight some of the new technologies we've been applying to google search and to demonstrate why we believe that search will never be a solved problem but before we do i want to spend some time talking about what makes us unique specifically four key elements that drive forward our innovation these elements form the foundation for what allows us to answer trillions of queries every year the first is our unwavering commitment to deeply understand all the world's information Two decades ago, we built the most comprehensive index of websites to rank search results. But of course, people don't just want access to web information. They want to know about the world around them. Why is the sky red today? How busy is my local grocery store right now? What does that sign say in a language I can't read? The next step was the knowledge graph, which embeds relationships and facts about people, places, and thanks so if you ask how tall is europe's tallest mountain we give you the answer and can also show you other users explorations such as in which country is europe's tallest mountain of course much of the information in the world isn't contained on the web so back in 2007 we started driving cars down streets in order to capture real world imagery at the time people thought it was an impossible feat fast forward to today street view imagery enables people to learn more about the world it also helps place businesses on the map so people can find and support local stores we've mapped 87 countries including previously under mapped places like armenia lebanon tanzania and tonga and we've enabled people everywhere to virtually explore not just their streets but Everest base camp the great barrier reef the grand canyon 
and many other destinations. Another way we make real-world information available to help people is with busyness indicators on Google Search and Maps. You can see popular times, as well as how busy a place is right now, which is incredibly helpful in the age of social distancing. Over the past few months, we've expanded this to include new outdoor categories, such as parks and beaches. And we are on track to add live busyness information to millions of new places, including restaurants and stores, by the end of the year. Today, we are announcing that soon in Google Maps, you'll be able to see how busy a place is directly on the map without having to search for a specific business. This can help you make more informed decisions about what places you visit and when, helping you and your loved ones stay safe, healthy, and informed. We're also adding COVID-19 safety information front and center on business profiles across Google Search and Maps. This will help you know if a business requires you to wear a mask, if you need to make an advance reservation, or if the staff is taking extra safety precautions like temperature checks. One striking example where AI is helping us better understand information is with video. Through our ongoing research, we've advanced our ability to understand the deep semantics of a video. When you search for the best cordless vacuums, a technology will automatically highlight points in videos that compare different products. So you don't need to painfully scan the entire video. Crucially, all of this analysis happens behind the scenes before you even ask your query. And these examples highlight what sets our approach apart. So, having done the heavy lifting behind the scenes, our second element is to deliver the best results on every query. Delivering high quality results is what has always set Google apart from other search engines, even in our earliest days. And in a year when access to reliable information is more critical than ever, from COVID-19 to natural disasters to important moments of civic participation around the world, our longstanding commitment to quality remains at the core of our mission. While dozens of ingredients go into this, I want to highlight two natural language understanding, and the rigorous evaluation of search results. As we shared last year, we made a huge breakthrough in natural language understanding with a new model we call BERT. BERT models consider the full context of a word by looking at the words that come before and after it, particularly useful for understanding the intent behind search queries. At launch, BERT helped improve search on a massive scale, impacting one in 10 searches in the US and English. Today, I'm thrilled to share that BERT is now used in almost every English search. And we've expanded to dozens of languages and seen particularly impressive gains in Spanish, Portuguese, Hindi, Arabic, German, and Amharic. Advances in natural language understanding are also helping people save time. Over the last two years, Duplex, a conversational technology, has helped people complete more than a million tasks, like making reservations at a restaurant. And since the beginning of the pandemic, Duplex has made calls to businesses in eight countries to confirm things like opening hours or whether they offer takeout and delivery. This enabled us to make 3 million updates to business information that have been seen over 20 billion times in maps and search. So that's natural language understanding. But delivering the highest quality results also necessitates a rigorous evaluation process. Every year, we do hundreds of thousands of tests and experiments to measure the quality of our results and ensure that any improvements really make our results better. Last year alone, we made more than 3,600 updates to make Google more helpful. The third element is world-class security and privacy. As we design our products, we focus on keeping your information safe, treating it responsibly, and putting you in control. Protecting you starts with security. From the beginning, we've led the industry in keeping you safe while searching. We encrypt every search on Google, including both the queries and the results returned. And we're constantly fighting against bad actors, whether that's protecting you against malware or alerting you to phony sites that try to steal your personal information. Every single day, we detect more than 25 billion spammy pages. 
If each of those pages were a page in a book, that would mean almost 20 million copies of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. To keep you safe, we deployed technology like Google Safe Browsing, which shows warnings when you attempt to navigate to dangerous sites or download dangerous files. Today, more than 4 billion devices are protected by Google Safe Browsing. And we show 3 million safe browsing warnings per day. Now let's talk about privacy. We believe that privacy is personal and it's our responsibility to provide users with easy to use controls so they can choose the settings that are just right for them. I want to highlight three. The first is the Google account, which is all of your easy to use privacy settings in one place. This year alone, it's been visited more than 12 billion times. The second is privacy checkup which lets you choose the settings that are just right for you. So far this year, 291 million people have taken a privacy checkup. The third is auto-delete controls, which give you the choice to have Google automatically and continuously delete your search data after three months or 18 months. We believe products should keep your information for only as long as it's helpful and useful to you we believe that privacy is a universal right. And we're committed to giving every user the tools they need to be in control. I also want to affirm the searches are between you and Google. We have a responsibility to protect and respect your data. That's why we never sell your personal information, period. A fourth and final element is open access for everyone. The internet is nothing short of a technical and economic marvel. Over the past two decades, we're proud to have been a part of the creation of millions of businesses and entire industries. The traffic we send to the open web has increased every year since we first created Search. That's more readers of articles, downloaders of apps, and customers of businesses every year for the last 22 years. We also believe in open access no matter what language you speak which is why Google is available in over 150 languages across 190 domains. We're constantly adding more languages, including ongoing work to help you set your search language to ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs. And we're continuing to invest in scripts, such as our recent improvements to Zoggy, a widespread font encoding used across Myanmar. And fundamental to open access is the belief that Google search should be free for everyone accessible on any device, so you can find what you're looking for and form your own opinions. Ranking factors and policies are applied fairly to all websites, and this has led to widespread access to a diversity of information, ideas, and viewpoints. I want to close by reiterating how seriously we take our mission. We are able to deliver a higher standard for Google search because of our ability to innovate in these four elements. Underlying all of the work I just spoke about is the need for prodigious amounts of processing far beyond traditional hardware. That is why we built cloud TPUs, accelerated chips developed specifically for neural network machine learning. Our latest cloud TPU pods are capable of over 100 petaflops. To put this in perspective, the difference in speed between one such pod and the Cray-1 an iconic supercomputer built in 1975 is greater than the difference between the speed of light and the speed of a turtle. I honestly never imagined in my lifetime comparing a cray to a turtle. From new technologies to new opportunities, we're really excited about the future of search and all of the ways it can help us make sense of the world. As I said in the beginning, search will never be a solved problem. So to show you new ways in which we're bringing the most advanced AI into search, here's Kathy. Information has the power to unlock so many things for people in so many different situations who actually deliver good, helpful, reliable information is really what drives me. When you type into Google, fruit that looks like an orange pufferfish, what happens in the next few milliseconds 
is the work of thousands of engineers writing hundreds of millions of lines of code over 22 years. Perfect Search is a holy grail, and we will never stop on our quest. But recent breakthroughs in AI have helped us make some of the biggest improvements to search ever. To give you the name of the fruit, Kiwano, when you need it, and much more. Now, we've all got those words that, try as you might, you just can't remember how to spell. Mine is bureaucracy. Is the E-A-U bit before the R or after the R? Where do the C's go? I can never remember. In fact, one in 10 search queries are misspelled. But it doesn't matter because our did you mean feature is there to help. We've been building this spelling technology for 18 years. How? By looking for mistakes. We look at all the ways in which people misspell words in queries and text all over the web and use that to predict what you actually mean. It's working pretty well, but by the end of this month, it's gonna work even better. Not just a little bit better, a lot better. It's gonna improve more in this one day than it has for the last five years combined. This is because of a new spelling algorithm that uses a deep neural net with 680 million parameters that can better model the weird edge cases in our mistakes. Like when you need context to figure out that what looks like a correctly spelled word is actually a misspelling. Or when your typo is just really, really, really far off and it runs in under three milliseconds, which is faster than one flap of a hummingbird's wings. So we can now correct even more obscure things than before. It's an amazing example of using AI in practice. Beyond spelling, AI is improving results for all types of searches, broad searches and super specific searches. Specific searches are the harder ones. Sometimes it's like looking for a needle in a haystack. That one sentence that answers your question is buried deep in the page. It's pretty hard to return the right results in these situations because the information you're looking for isn't the main focus of the page. The relevance of that one section is sort of watered down by the lack of relevance of all the other words on the page. To understand what's happening here, you need to understand how search works. At the heart of search is an index like the one at the back of a book. And our index contains not just web pages, but images, places, books, products, streets, buildings, videos, and more. We've recently made another breakthrough and are now able to not just index web pages, but individual passages from those pages. This helps us find that needle in a haystack because now the whole of that one passage is relevant. So for example, let's say you search for something pretty niche, like how can I determine if my house windows are UV glass? This is a pretty tricky query. We get lots of web pages that talk about UV glass and how you need a special film, but none of this really helps a layperson take action. Our new algorithm can zoom right into this one passage on a DIY forum that answers the question. Apparently, you can use the reflection of a flame to tell and ignores the rest of the posts on the page that aren't quite as helpful. Now, you're not gonna do this query necessarily, but we all look for very specific things sometimes. And starting next month, this technology will improve 7% of search queries across all languages. And that's just the beginning. So AI has helped us with specific searches. But what about broader searches? Here's one. When gyms were closed, a lot of people, including me, set up mini gyms in their homes. I started by doing a search like home exercise equipment, and I got a lot of websites that list all the equipment you might need. This is helpful, but wait, what if I have a small space or a small budget, or I just wanna go for the best of the best? How do I figure out what's right for me? We think about these different aspects as subtopics of your broad question. We've now started to use AI to learn about these subtopics, which lets us capture the particular nuance of what each page is really about. 
We can then use this information and ranking to show a wider range of results for broad queries. So we can be more helpful to all the types of people who want to find something that's just right for their particular need. Sometimes the answer you need is in a web page, but other times it's in a video. Getting to the right information inside the video quickly can be a challenge, though. For example, I was looking for a quick fix for my leaking bathtub plug. It's one of those annoying ones with the push button. I found a video to help me that seemed promising, but the crucial tip I was looking for came at the 7 minute and 14 second mark. Some content creators mark these key moments in their videos, making it easier to jump straight to what's useful. But doing this is work for the creators. As you heard Prabhaka mention earlier, we've been experimenting with a new AI-driven approach to deeply understand videos, combining advanced computer vision and automatic speech recognition. This lets us tag these key moments and allows you to navigate them like chapters in a book. So, for example, if you're making smothered baked pork chops, you can jump right to the part of the video that shows how to thicken the sauce at the end. We just talked about how we're applying AI to make Google search even better. But AI can do even more. And we're particularly excited about the ways it can help journalism. Over the past couple of years, we've been working closely with journalists on a new tool to help with one of the most important parts of their work, uncovering information. For those of you watching who aren't journalists, just try and imagine how much time and effort it can take to sift through everything from court documents and email archives to stacks of images, and don't forget about those pesky handwritten notes in the margins. So we developed Pinpoint, an anchor product of Journalist Studio, a new suite of tools that harnesses the power of Google to help reporters. Pinpoint helps you rapidly go through hundreds of thousands of documents by automatically identifying and organizing the most frequently mentioned people, organizations, and locations. This lets journalists sift through their document trove much more quickly. Whether you're looking for all references to a source or if a person and a place are ever mentioned together. AI surfaces new connections that we've heard from multiple newsrooms would be practically impossible to discover by hand. And reporters don't have to start from scratch. Pinpoint includes shared document collections from some of our key partners. Pinpoint will allow reporters to upload and analyze documents in seven languages and is available for free now. Here's a look at how journalists are using Pinpoint to uncover new patterns and find the facts that matter. The biggest challenge for reporting, honestly, is time, right? It's really difficult to say no when somebody wants you to look into something that you believe is important, but you just don't have the time to do it. My colleague Tricia Nadolny and I were asked to handle investigations relating to social services during the pandemic. Our focus really became largely about nursing homes during that time period. We requested records from all 50 states and I uploaded them into Pinpoint. Pretty much immediately when you upload documents and that side populates with the list of names that are included or places that are included, you can kind of very quickly get an idea of what is in there. We compiled that into a database that we then analyzed and provided to the public. For the first time, some families were able to look up their loved one's assisted living facility and see whether there had been a case because in some states and in some counties, facilities were not communicating directly with families in a way where they felt like they understood what was going on. In terms of investigative journalism, our job is to expose wrongdoing, to shed light on something that's going wrong in the hopes that maybe it can go in a better direction. The magic of search for me is like, regardless of where you are, who you are, what you do, you have 
all that information at your fingertips. As Kathy just shared, we're applying advanced machine learning to help you find the answers you're looking for on Google, even for the most obscure questions. But with all of this firepower, Google can also help you really understand a topic, whether it is how does photosynthesis work, or how has the median age in the US changed over time, or what type of car is best for your growing family. And we can help you understand regardless of how you search, whether it's through a text query, your voice, or even with your smartphone camera. Let me show you a couple of areas where we can be particularly helpful. The first is learning. Students around the world, like my son, have been handling remote learning with resilience and grace all the time. Well, maybe most of the times. At Google, we're working hard on tools to help lighten their load. Like Google Lens, our visual search tool that lets you search what you see. So if you're learning a new language, you can already use Lens to translate over 100 languages with your camera. But now you can tap to hear words and sentences pronounced out loud. Los hipopótamos pasan la mayoría del tiempo en el agua. And if you're a parent like me, your kids may be asking you questions about things you never thought you'd need to remember, like quadratic equations. Remember them? From the search bar in the Google app, you can now use Lens to snap a photo of a homework problem and learn how to solve it on your own. To do this, Lens first turns an image of a homework question into a query. And based on the query, we show you step-by-step -step guides and videos to help you understand the problem. And then, using a new learning element of the knowledge graph, we show you the broader foundational concepts you need to solve this problem, but also others like it. This works across math, chemistry, biology, physics, and more. But sometimes, seeing is understanding. For example, it can be more powerful to see the inner workings of a plant cell than to read about it. We think AR can make hands-on learning a little easier, letting you explore concepts up close in your space. Here's how one teacher from Texas is incorporating AR into her lesson plans. I heard about a, a teacher. The teacher was very animated, a lot of, you know, fun anecdotes and stories. And uh, the teacher was so involved in what they were saying that they simply didn't recognize that they had been on mute the entire time. <laughs> It's very hard engaging students in this new environment. Turn to page 56, okay. There's page 56. With AR, we are able to bring it into real life and manipulate it. Hey, what's inside of there? Oh, wow, I never realized metallic bonding looked like that. That's where we really see kids catch on fire and start to learn things that are exciting to them. It opens up possibilities that they never thought of before. We're talking about an experience that's going to stick with kids forever. Oh my goodness, there are so many ways. It's super exciting. <laughs> I think it's an enormous game changer. Whether or not we're in school, we're all learners, and we all have questions about the world. And sometimes answering these questions requires data. Data that's spread across multiple sources, that's in messy formats, and just not easy to get to. That's why, since 2018, we've been working with the Census, World Bank, and many other organizations on this open database called Data Commons. And this data is already being used by students and researchers across many universities. Now, we're going further. We're making data commons available directly in Google Search as a new layer of the knowledge graph. So if you want to learn about a topic like um, employment in Chicago, you can simply ask Google. Let's take income levels. We can break it down by individual versus household incomes. 
We can also show it in the context of the trends overall in the US. Or you want to know what jobs are trending. Jobs, turns out, are defined across more than 2,500 categories. So we have to aggregate them at the right level so that you and I can easily understand. In both these examples, we use natural language processing to understand your intent, then map it to relevant sources in data commons, and then present the results in a visual format. Another area where you need to make sense of a lot of information to make decisions is shopping. This new normal that we are all living has dramatically accelerated the shift to e-commerce. That's why we're making improvements to shopping that help both merchants and consumers. For merchants, we recently made it free to list and sell on Google, so it's easier for them to reach the millions of shoppers who come to Google every day. For consumers, we're making it easier to discover and learn about new products, even when they're difficult to describe in words. Say you're shopping for your work from home clothes. You're browsing online and you come across a picture of this sweater. What would you search for? Mustard, yellow, ruffle sleeves, cotton, crew neck sweater? Starting next month, you can just long press on any image you come across as you browse on the Google app or Chrome. Not only will Lens help you find the exact or similar items, it'll also suggest ways to style it. To pull this off, we take the world's largest database of products and combine it with our style engine technology, which understands different looks and concepts like ruffles or vintage denim, and also figures out how to match with other apparel based on millions of style images. So that's how you can shop what you see in Lens. But what about being able to see what you shop, especially when you cannot go into stores to check out a product up close? With AR, we're bringing the showroom to you. If you're in the market for a new car, you can just search for it on Google, and you can see a photorealistic model right there in front of you. We've now built cloud streaming technology so that if you're connected to a high-speed network, you can check out what your dream car looks like in blue, in black, or metallic red. And you can zoom in to see intricate details like the steering wheel or the material of the seats. You can also see the cars against beautiful backdrops or bring it right into your driveway. We're working with top auto brands to bring these experiences to you in the coming months. Another area where AR can be helpful is in understanding the world around you. That's why last year we introduced Live View on Google Maps, which uses AR to show you which way to walk using arrows and directions overlaid right in front of you. In the coming months, we'll pair the same technology with helpful information about a place right from within Live View. For example, you can quickly see information about a restaurant. Is it open? How busy it tends to get? Its star rating and more by simply pointing the camera. Whether you type, use your voice, or point your camera, you can use Google in different ways. And there's one more way that some of our engineers have been working on. Take a look. <laughs> Ah, oh, come on. What's that song? That's right. Now you can hum to search. Believe it or not, people ask Google what song is playing almost 100 million times a month. And behind the scenes, it's no surprise to you, we use machine learning to match your hum or whistle to the song. We hope you have fun with it. So today, you've heard from Prabhakar and Kathy 
about how we're using the most advanced machine learning to constantly innovate on Google search, as well as examples of how we're committed to deeply understanding all of the world's information. And we're excited to bring you on our journey to provide high quality information to all the world. Information that's open, useful, and easily accessible to everyone, that's built with world-class privacy and security to keep you safe, that provides rich understanding no matter how you search, and even in these difficult times, brings a little joy. Thank you, be safe. How do I work with the hypotenuse? Do we have three hours? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You know, I never did spelling bees when I was a kid. P-A-R-A-P-H-E-R-M-A-L-I-A. -A -A. How does photosynthesis work? A plant needs to get energy from the sun. And I was never very good at the life sciences. Beats me. <laughs> I have no idea, and I apologize. <laughs>